and this is my brother, Frank. What's going on, guys? Some of you may not have met my lovely sister, Gina. And for those of you that haven't, we're actually triplets. I have a brother as well. We are all 28 years old. And I'd like to touch on my sister's weight loss story. So this started back in the middle of 2017, around July, where she was about 155 pounds. The thing is, she's only four foot eleven, so 155 pounds was pretty heavy on her frame. Uh, Gina, do you want to talk about uh, how you felt when uh, before you lost all the weight? I felt like a bloated manatee. That's pretty much it, and I kind of looked like a blobfish. There was skin all over, and my thighs kind of stuck together with all the fat, and the, it wasn't pretty. My mother would always joke about how she used to waddle around instead of walk, but it only took her about a year to lose all of the weight. So in July of 2018 was when she was down to about 100, 105 pounds. Now it's actually almost a year since she has lost the weight. Uh, so she's maintained the lower body weight for a year. And if you look at statistics of people uh, that regain weight or that have lost large amounts of weight in general, I think it's like 90% of them gain most of the weight back uh, within a six month time frame. So there's also something to be said about, you know, the retention of the loss of body weight on this diet. Do you know overall, how is your experience on this diet? Do you remember what we started with? Do you remember what you were eating back in 2017? Uh, I know that it was not healthy at all. It was like cake, pies, mm -hmm. especially, especially the apple pies from McDonald's, which are very bad for you. Do you remember what you were eating when we started the diet? Uh, eggs. Was it fish? Did we ever have fish? <laughs> I'm not sure. It was a long time ago. So back in 2017, when we started the diet, it was initially like a lazy keto diet. You know, she was having eggs for breakfast. I think we did grilled chicken for lunch and then for a snack, usually some type of heavy whipping cream from the supermarket, uh, maybe mixed with berries. And then for dinner, uh, we would do like spaghetti squash noodles with a protein source. Uh, but the theme was keto, conventional food, not too high quality, all from the supermarket. You know, so the eggs were conventionally raised. You know, the cream was from conventional dairy, pasteurized, homogenized. The food quality wasn't that good. That worked for about four months. Uh, she went from 155 pounds to 130 pounds very quickly and not really being strict on the diet. You know, she would cheat from time to time. Uh, the carbohydrate intake was still there. Uh, we weren't really mindful of the amount of calories she was consuming and she still lost half the weight she needed to lose. But then we stalled for a pretty long period of time. And I would say for two or three months, she did not lose any weight. Uh, we restricted the calories a lot. We were exercising a lot. You know, I think there was a point where she was only eating, you know, four to 500 calories a day and doing cardio every day. And I couldn't figure out why she wasn't losing weight. And this is back at a time where I still believed that calories in, calories out held some truth to it. So we decided to switch over to a stricter version of the diet, and this is where she went carnivore. I would say this was in the beginning of 2018. Uh, we pretty much cut out all of the vegetables she was having. Uh, we increased the food quality. You know, all the meat I started purchasing from a local farm. I started getting raw grass-fed dairy, and then she started dropping the weight again. So Gina, I don't know if you remember when you were eating like the squash noodles and all of that stuff, the fish, and then how we switched over from like eggs to bologna. And I think half of that I remember. I think half of that I remember. The rest, a little bit hazy. So how do you like the what you've been eating lately, the meat diet? It is very delicious, especially though the, is it the granola cereal with the meat or is it, is it actually granola or what is actually in that stuff? We'll show you guys that in another video. We'll do a, a what she eats in a day video. But her whole diet is focused on protein and animal protein. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because she was pretty much a carboholic and a sugarholic. And now all she eats is, you know, steak and meat. For breakfast, she'll usually have some eggs, 
Uh, for lunch, it'll be like bologna from a local farm. For a snack, she'll have some cheese or some charcuterie, some sausage, prosciutto, something like that. And then for dinner, she'll have some more steak, some pork. Just high quality, you know, meat with a good omega-3 to omega-6 ratio, maybe even sometimes fish. And this is what resulted in her losing the majority of the weight. Uh, I was making some liver pâtés and stuff for her, but the main transition to keep in mind here was going from that very lazy ketogenic diet, which doesn't actually help some people lose weight. Uh, we tightened it up a bit, counted the calories, exercised, and it still didn't work. Then we went over to a carnivore diet, and that helped her lose most of the rest of the weight. And I, I think she got to about 115 pounds on a fairly loose carnivore diet. And when I tightened up the food quality even further, that's where she really lost the rest of the weight and, you know, had a lot more energy and became healthier in general. You bet you, Frank, my better half. And the exercise throughout the workout routine was fairly consistent when she was losing the weight, but she hasn't really had to exercise consistently to maintain the weight. And I don't think that exercise is necessary for the weight loss. It would certainly help, you know, increasing your lean body mass, uh, keeping things moving would a result in would give you a much larger margin of error and allow you to maybe deviate from the diet a little bit. But Gina, why don't you talk a little bit about the things you were eating that you shouldn't have been eating? Definitely, the definitely. I used to have uh, these like giant frapp frappuccinos. Is that what it's called? They had like a hundred and something calories, which is they were very very bad for you, but they tasted really good. And you were having these when you were on the diet, Gina. Once in a while. So my point is, it's arguable that she cheated on the diet every single day. Uh, I can't only have... only once, Frank. Oh, that's that's Tell absolutely the truth. that's absolutely not true. But I can attest that she probably didn't stick to the diet. I would say you know three out of seven days. You know she probably cheated about half the week, and these were with very poor, low quality foods that would really compromise the integrity of a carnivore or low carbohydrate diet in general. You know, when you're consuming, you know, frappuccinos with sugar, high carbohydrate foods, or high, donuts. high omega-6 foods, uh, it makes it difficult. And that would explain why, you know, the weight loss might have stalled at certain periods of time and why we had to get really strict on the diet in some capacities. And now that I've lost all the weight, I feel fantastic. I feel healthy. I don't feel like a giant bloated manatee. Mm-hmm. And um, my brother is just really a really good guy. Mm. So for all you ladies out there who are looking for a good guy, date this guy. Gina, how would you say your exercise was throughout the weight loss period? Very relaxing. It was fast paced. You know, it was nice and. What did you What moderate. did you mostly do for exercise, Gina? I do the bike. I do the treadmill. Mm. And also, I've been doing squats, which which have been toning my butt and my stomach. So we've been doing some weight training throughout this period of time uh, but it's mostly been cardio uh, just to kind of build up you know the overall you know muscle it's difficult you know when you've been kind of inactive for most of your life uh, to really get in the gym and, and do weight training and get a really strict fitness routine so i don't want people to feel like by any means they need to have a personal trainer or or do really well in the gym and you know spend an hour and a half two hours a day in the gym uh, to lose the weight uh, that's absolutely has nothing to do with it. Uh, but to touch more on her diet, uh, the final results were achieved with the incorporation of nutrient density. You know, she was eating liver very frequently. Uh, she actually loves liver now. You it's know, delicious. We were making uh, liver pate and she was like dipping raw cheese in it. What about avocado? Did I ever have avocado? I don't think we, I don't think we did avocado at all. We should do avocado, uh, have avocado, there, yeah. avocado. That's what maybe, we maybe we'll have some in the future. Uh, Sounds delicious. Can't live without that guac. <laughs> so she definitely had a high vitamin A intake from the liver. You know, I made sure she was eating a lot of raw cheese for vitamin K2. Uh, in regards to omega fatty acids, I, I didn't really make sure that they were too balanced, uh, but she was getting enough EPA and DHA from the pasture-raised eggs every morning. So every nutrient that she needed was present in her diet. And even vitamin D3 and iodine. Uh, you know, more recently, we've been supplementing iodine, and throughout the period of time, she has been taking vitamin D3. 
So if any of you guys are having issues on a ketogenic diet, a low quality carnivore diet, you know, maybe you're missing a few things here and there. Every single one of these elements will contribute to you losing weight in the long run. If you're missing one element of your diet, th that's really it. You know, you're going to be over consuming certain foods. Uh, your body's constantly going to be craving something. Your appetite, your hunger signals are going to be off. Your energy isn't going to be good. Gina, why don't you tell them how everyone has responded to your weight loss? Um, so far I've gotten positive feedback. They say, Gina, you look fantastic. What's your secret? Mm -hmm. I tell my brothers a person what my personal trainer mm -hmm. and I tell them what I eat every day. Mm -hmm. What is their response to what you tell them? And they say, that doesn't sound very appetizing, but I say, I assure them it is very tasty. It's super healthy and it tricks my mind into thinking it isn't healthy when it really is. Throughout this whole dietary journey, the food she's been eating have been very tasty. You know, when I make her eggs for breakfast, so it's, good. it's usually with like raw butter, raw cheese, bacon, really high quality ingredients. Mm -mm. Uh, the lunch is bologna from a local farm. And, and we know most people like cold cuts and charcuterie and bologna. Uh, the snacks she's been having, uh, raw cheese, you know, who doesn't like cheese? Uh, sometimes she has cream with like raw cacao. And then for dinner, we do like hot dogs or more meat or, you know, everything is super tasty. You know, you're not eating plain grilled chicken. I would argue, you know, the carnivore diet with the high quality food she's following now tastes much better than the diet she started on or really any version of the diet. When you're consuming high quality food, you know, from a local farm, that's where you're going to get uh, the satiation as well as, you know, the enjoyment that you're missing from other diets. So, uh... Please, if you want, please subscribe to my brother's channel, YouTube channel and like him on Facebook, any social media. And if you guys would like to support me further, you can check out Frankie's Free Range Meat, providing you guys with high quality, nutrient dense animal foods at an affordable price. So if you don't have access to a local farm, definitely check out Frankie's Free Range Meat.com for 100% grass fed and grass finished grass fed beef, organ meats, fat, raw cheeses caviar, you name it, we have it at the most affordable price online. Thanks again for joining us, guys, and enjoy the rest of your week. Bye, YouTube people!